Hel- Helm enjoys us. How are you, Harold? I'm good, Mike. Oh, we're just having a laugh because every, every week I get Harold in here. I've always got a story related to burn uh, related to our subjects. Um, today's burnout. No, I am not burnt out yet, <laughs> which, I th- which I think is a good thing. I don't know. Have I burnt out? No, no, no. Laughter. You're laughing, and la- believe it or not, laughter is a real good sign. It means that you're keeping things in perspective. Look, it's 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 actually a um, a legitimate syndrome now as opposed to a term that we used to throw around okay. 20, 30 years ago. It is, you know, the psychological pressure associated with intensive work environments uh, combined with then people getting less sleep, staying in the, you know, staying at the office, uh, all kinds of hours. Um, it really takes its toll. And, you know, it's a matter of people um, become unsafe when they get to the point where they are mentally depleted and physically exhausted, their judgment is skewed. Um, there are some real reasons to actually send someone home and, you know, have them hook up with a, a counselor right. um, to really work through issues that have gotten them in that situation. Isn't it, though, a problem for you if that is something that rears its head during your work? Because all of a sudden, doesn't work start looking at you as, well, I hate to say it, but a, a little bit weak. You know, if you can't stand the heat, sort get thing. out of the kitchen. Yeah. and there's that, that old mentality? Yeah, it is. There is that sort of, there's that when we feel we're under stress, we're less reluctant to talk about it. If we've got the flu or some physical illness, it's much easier to walk in and go, hey, I've got to take some time off to get myself well. But when you're feeling that stress and that pressure, particularly for particularly for men and mm. women, it's a it's a problem for millennial women, particularly under uh, you know right around thirty or so, with families and big job pressures, where we're reluctant to go in and go, look, you know, I need to make some adjustments associated with the bigger picture around uh, my health and wellness. Does burnout affect everybody? Because I'm thinking I'm thinking straight away when you say burnout, doctors you know, uh, ambulance drivers. Yeah. I'm not so much thinking about somebody who has a nine to five retail job, but yeah. I, uh, can it affect them as well? It can affect them. Okay. It really can. A lot of it is, you know, it's it's a combination. There's three things really associated with, um, with um, burnout. The first one is exhaustion. So it's just, you know, you can only take yourself so far. The average human being still needs between seven and eight hours of sleep a night. Right. And some people think that they can build up a sleep debt you know, go for two weeks pushing themselves and then catch up. It it, it doesn't work that way. So exhausting. Oh, does it not? It doesn't work that that way. (laughs) And then then there's cynicism where people just start to hate their job and you can sort of hear it from them. They get cynical where they just start to, everything's negative all of a sudden. Oh, yeah, no, a lot of that that goes on. And then they just start to feel like, you know, they're not as capable because that self-confidence thing. So it's a vicious cycle when it starts to swirl around, which is another reason why if you are working with someone who you think is getting to that point of burnout, put your, it's short circuit. It. You put your finger in there and short circuit that loop and, and pull them aside and just say, hey, you know, let, let, we're all humans. Like, we, are you under-resourced? Are you taking on too much? Is it your own thinking about that you have to have your hands on everything? Um, do you have to let go? It's some important conversations to have with people. So sometimes. don't, so don't be scared. Don't think that you are showing weakness if you bring up the fact that you are burning out, or if you approach somebody who is burning out. That's right. Uh, it's not, you know, hey, we're going to get rid of you uh, once you've worked through this because you That's can't right. handle the job. It's not like that at all. That's right. There's even, you know, there's a there's a personality type that actually correlates with people who do very well, and they tend to have a bit a bit of perfectionism. They have high standards. They have high drive. They take on a lot. It gets reinforced because people start funneling work towards them. Mm. Sometimes they micromanage right. because they just have to be that much across the detail. So sometimes the, 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 the antidote to burnout is go inside your own thinking mm. and determine whether or not the way you think about your role, who you are as a leader, um, how much you take on, those types of things. Maybe you need to change some of the mental cassettes. Okay, what can you do on that 
to to further prevent burnout? Well, you know, I, again, because of the correlation between the psychological stress and the physical stress, you got to get enough sleep. You got to get sleep. sleep. And people sleep is uh, in the day and age, in this day and age of a lot of uh, mobile devices coming into our bedrooms with oh, us. God, yes. <laughs> it is hard. It, it is, is hard, hard. sometimes for people to actually sleep. So. Um, you know, particularly if you've got a job that's really physically challenging um, and or for that matter, where you have to be focused for a lot, you got to get good sleep. Um, learn how to unplug, okay. just unplug, mm -hmm. learn how to relax. Um, things that fill you with energy are helpful. So don't fit your friends in when you start to feel under stress. Build them in. Go after them. Call people who make you laugh. Right. Plug into people who, you know, you just, they fill you with energy. You got to sort of balance those things with whether it's listening to music, writing, gardening, get into something that, you know, you're passionate about. And drinking. Uh, <laughs> drink. <laughs> there tends to be a little bit of a curve with drinking. Okay, cool. The first two or three drinks, you feel fine. But after that, <laughs> I'll take that one off the list. Then. <laughs> a lot of us do that um, and, and, and easy to overcome. Yeah. But the, the point is balance. Like, you know, don't like don't get consumed by work because that's all there is mm. before you know it, you know. There's a correlation between people who are workaholics who get to that stage of burnout and relationships failing, marriages ending, and those types of things. Don't have that regret on the other side of your life that, you know, you didn't build in a rich enough um, sort of the other balance. Well, no, but that's a hard thing, though, isn't it? Because sometimes you, not that you want to be defined, but, you know, your legacy is for a lot of people, the, the, you know, your work, your work life, you know. When people are at your funeral and they're standing out there saying, oh, you know, he worked hard, he always went above the, you know, the call of duty. Uh, a lot of people thrive on that. So it, it's hard to, to not burn out because you want to give sometimes your all, don't you? Yeah, that, it, it, it's, 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 it's ironic. Um, Bronnie Ware, um, um, a palliative care nurse, wrote a book, The Top Five Regrets of the Dying, um, where she did hundreds of interviews with dying patients. And one of the top five regrets is, I wish I hadn't worked so hard. There you go. There you go. And that puts it in perspective. And it's sort of like, you know, come to that realization 30 years earlier. And there's a lot of life to enjoy. And so sometimes we really do just need to put things in perspective, what's really important. Well, if you want to know more, get hold of Harold. Maybe you're running a business or maybe you just want to read one of his books. Uh, there's a website we can go to to have a wee look, isn't there? That's right. Um, Sigmoidcurve.com. Thanks, Harold. Thank Brilliant. you, Mike.